Welcome to Christ Lutheran Church. How are you today? Can you hear me okay in the back? We're testing out the sound system. If you ever have trouble hearing me, I'm hearing a little bit of echo right now, Bob. I'm hearing a little echo. Um, you may not be, but I am. If you have any trouble, just always raise your hand and let us know, and we'll alert the sound guys. Glad to have you here for our first worship in the Lord's New Sanctuary. I want to thank the choir for being back. I would give an amen to the choir. Amen, amen to our greeters. Amen, amen to our altar guild. Amen. amen to everybody on the soundboard back there. Amen, amen to Bob Dunbar. I only have to be doing two worship services. Amen. I don't know if I said it, but amen again to the altar guild. We're glad to have them back. Okay, good. We are dedicating the Lord's Sanctuary today. You will see in your bulletin there's a half-page insert. So please, I'll guide you to that when we get that far. We are asking you to wear your name tags again. Uh, not only so we know who you all are, um, so that when you come up for communion, uh, you are spoiled by me. I know all of your names. I am going to be using the pouring chalice. The first person at communion you're going to see is our communion assistant handing you the host wafer. They would like to say your name. So if they don't, if you don't have a name tag, I would suggest you tell them ahead of time. Otherwise, you might hear me uh, embarrass you going, yeah, that's Doug. <laughs> She's good. She wore her name tag. But seriously, if you lost your name tag, just let me know. We'll make you a new one. And thank you. A lot of you did wear them today. So good. We hope someday uh, the property team's working on it to have a uh, place for you to store them here at the church, but that's not ready yet. Didn't make the bulletin, but my Bible study has been meeting all through the pandemic on the first and third Tuesdays at 2 o'clock. We are starting a new study calling, called the Synopsis of the Four Gospels. What that means is I have ordered books. Um, you can share if you want to come, and we'll get you a book. Uh, Michelle, my Give Michelle an amen for everything she's been doing as our administrative assistant. All four of the Gospels are lined up, and you get to see the similarities as well as what is different. And you know I preach on that a lot. It's really fascinating theologically. So even if you can't attend and you'd like to have one, uh, it's very enlightening, and it's not that expensive, so just let me know. Uh, if you didn't get your messenger from me, which you're not going to do anymore, because I, you can touch things again, aren't you glad? Your messenger is out there in the fellowship hall on the white table, so I'll try to remind you before you leave to pick it up, so we welcome you to that. So you're going to want to go in there on Sundays and see what's on the table. Uh, there are going to be things in there, uh, bless you, such as your devotionals that I used to hand out. Uh, I'm just glad to not have to do those things anymore. We have drinks and cookies. I smell popcorn brewing. Is that correct? Are we having cookies today? I saw donuts. Donuts and coffee. I believe Daryl Schmidt was the first coffee drinker. He, he wins that award, so we're grateful for that. I asked Dorothy Moen this morning to test her hearing aids. She believes she's hearing through this system. She's going to wait afterwards. If you wear hearing aids, try to stop and see the guys in the back. Some of them will be applicable for our system, um, and some will not, depending on whether they have the right device in them. Newer ones will. So anyway, if you uh, want to stop and see that, that's our only way of knowing if they're working. For Holy Communion, you're going to come down the center aisle. You will see this here. You haven't seen this since traditional worship back in January of 2016. You will pick up a cup, please. Okay? and come to the altar. There's plenty of space. Don't worry about where you fill in on either side. Uh, we're going to ask this side to start here and go around or wherever you get in line, and this side, this side, so you can exit down here and back to your seats, okay? Your first communion assistant will have the pita bread and will tear you off a piece. No more dunking. If you try and stick that into the pouring chalice, I'm going to ask you for your cup, okay? I'm not going to touch your cup. If you have a little bit of tremor, just set it here on the altar, or you can hold it. I will fill it up. The pouring chalice, I'm going to thank uh, Lou and the altar guild. It works really well. I did test it with water. And then after you're done with the wine, you will hand it to the third communion assistant that has a return tray. Pretty simple, isn't it? Wouldn't suggest you try to kneel here yet. We had some people in the choir. Donna Kangas tried that. And it's, there's no padding yet. 
It's under construction. We're waiting on the foam. I saw Cindy Coburnick come in. Where's Cindy? There's Cindy. Cindy back there, keep your hand up. Cindy is making the kneelers for us by the grace of God. Have you been able to get the foam yet? The foam is on back order, so but we will have that. But aren't you glad to get back to the Lord's table? Instead of just looking at me on Sunday mornings? So grateful for that. So uh, the communion assistants will come up and get their cup and join me. And then after I commune them, uh, one of them will commune me, and uh, we will go forward from there. Uh, Diane English is here. I know she is, uh, needs gluten-free, so when you, there it's up here, Diane. So all you'll do is tell the host server that you need it and get it out of there. Uh, for those of you who do not partake in wine, that's me, okay? The wine is in a little vessel that's back there. I will pour it for you, okay? We're not going to be having the wine, excuse me, the grape juice in here anymore, okay? Lots of info. You ready to rock and roll? Yeah, it's good to see everybody, and I am so glad I'm not going to be in the parking lot today. <laughs> you have no idea, right, Bob? Right, Bob? Right, Mike? Right, George? <laughs> so if I may, if we have to go back to that, the pandemic, we can't. But if I may, if you will allow me for one second, I want to say goodbye to the parking lot. Na, 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 na. <laughs> Na 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 na, hey hey, goodbye, amen and hallelujah. We're going to take a quiet moment to pray our hearts and minds for worship. Fabulous to have a choir back, amen and hallelujah. Boy, I seem to be the only ones excited about that choir. I'm sorry about that. We are going to begin worship with the dedication that is in your bulletin before we have the gathering hymn. By the way, the hymnals are either in the chairs up front or underneath. Uh, some of you may need to share. We're getting more hymnals. We've got as many in here. If you still got them at home, we'll take them and put them out. This is the half page insert that you need. There is a portion on the back with our church logo. So if you'd like to follow along with me, which I hope you do, we're going to dedicate Jesus' new sanctuary, the year of our Lord, 2021, on May 2nd. Did you ever believe you'd be this far? I did, and I mean it. Sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ, through the power of the Holy Spirit, we are gathered today to ask for God our Father's blessing as we set apart His Son, Jesus Christ, Lutheran Church Sanctuary. Alleluia. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Right to give God, God thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise, O God our Father, creator of your universe, for you laid the foundation of your earth, you determined its measurements, and you granted life to every living thing. When your morning stars sang together and your heavenly beings shouted for joy, you fill your whole creation and earth with your presence. All of your creation and earth is holy ground. We give you thanks and praise you for the good things of your creation that, through the power of the Holy Spirit, are shaped into your Son, Jesus Christ's Lutheran Church Sanctuary, a place of worship, welcome, witness, and service which we also set apart for the ongoing ministries and missions of Jesus. You spin your stars around your heavens. You are the dwelling place of holy light. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to make Jesus church and sanctuary, places where your glory dwells in the holy light of your Son, Jesus Christ, and his holy gospel good news and holy sacraments. You give birth to your reign. 
your waters break forth in your deserts. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to grant that your gracious blessings descend like dew from heaven upon all of your people and gather, you gather here to worship. And then send us from here with the Holy Spirit's power to serve your son Jesus and his ministries and missions. We praise you for the joy of beginning a work in your holy name and for all of your people whose gifts and labor have prepared for this day. Through the power of the Holy Spirit who perpetually helps and guides us, may we always celebrate your presence in the house of your son, Jesus Christ, Lutheran Church, and in the time to come, praise you forever in your eternal home. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gracious God, our Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit and with faith in your Son, Jesus Christ, your ongoing work is dedicated to your glory and praise as your new sanctuary is formed into part of your Son, Jesus Christ's Lutheran Church. And we ask you to continue to bless our work on his behalf and us in your holy name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Amen. Our gathering hymn, you get to use your hymnals again, is 595, Jesus Loves Me. George, if you can put that up on the board for me, please. 595. in the choir another big amen. amen we begin worship uh, or we continue worship i should say on page two of your worship folder with the apostolic reading the grace of our lord and savior jesus christ the love of god our father and the communion of the holy spirit be with you all we come together in confession brothers and sisters in jesus christ in this easter season we continue to answer our savior and lord jesus call to struggle against sin, death, and the devil, all that keeps us from loving God our Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and our neighbors. This is a struggle to which we were called at holy baptism. Within the community of the Holy Catholic Church, Jesus never wearies of forgiving sin and granting his peace of reconciliation with God our Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and our neighbors. Let us confess our sin against God our Father, Son, Holy Spirit and our neighbors, and by confessing our sin, be reconciled with them. Amen. Amen. Most merciful God, our Father, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. At times we sin against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done, what we do not do. 
At times, we do not love you with our whole heart, mind, and soul. At times, we do not love our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, our Father, who is rich in grace and mercy in his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, loves us even when we are dead in our sin and makes us alive together in the body of Christ. By grace we are saved. In the holy name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Almighty God, our Father, continue to strengthen us with power through the Holy Spirit so that Jesus lives in our hearts, minds, souls, and in our actions, words, and deeds through faith. Amen. I know we have some people that have returned to us from the pandemic as well as some visitors. Just want to show you that we are continuing with the prayer of the day. It's in your worship folder. So that is actually page two, not in the inserts, okay? Let us pray the prayer of the day together. O oh God, our Father, you gave your only Son, Jesus, our Savior and Lord, to suffer death on his cross for our redemption. And by his crucifixion, death, and glorious resurrection, you deliver us from the power of sin, death, and hell. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, continue to make us die every day to our sin, so that we live with Jesus forever in the joy of his death and resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the prayer for the world. Let us pray it together. Let us pray for all victims of any forms of violence, terror, human trafficking, and all displaced peoples, all victims of ethnic, racial, gender, sexual, political, and religious discrimination and violence, all victims of natural disasters or human-made disasters, all victims of war, warlike activity, conflict, oppression, and strife, including in Afghanistan, Syria, and Yemen. Gracious God, our Father of healing and wholeness, through the power of the Holy Spirit, bring relief in every way you see fit for those impacted by natural disasters, human-made disasters, conflicts, persecutions, and wars. Empower all peoples to reach out to those impacted through the healing power of Jesus Christ. God, our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we admit our human frailties and recognize we live in a fallen creation. Restore us each and every way as you see fit so that your will is done. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Our next hymn, I'm going to get George to get it up there on the board so you have time to look it up. Bob, we got to give him a you can play, but we can't start singing. I will notice people have to get to the hymn. It is hymn 376. 376. George is going to get it up on the screen. It is Thine is the Glory. 376. There, George has it up there. I'll let you get a second to get to it. So, Bob, if you see people flipping around, you can play an intro, but hang on till we begin. It's a work in progress. I do pay attention to what you're doing, though.
will find today's gospel in the insert section of your bulletin. On the top of the first page, it says Lessons and Financials. If you turn to page two with me, you will see the gospel from St. John for this Sunday and Easter there at the top. And we begin with the introduction to St. John's gospel. On the night of his arrest, Jesus teaches his disciples about the ongoing relationship they have with him. Those who abide in Jesus' holy word and love bear fruit, but apart from Jesus, we can do nothing. Alleluia! Christ is crucified and risen. Christ is crucified and risen indeed. Alleluia! The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said in continuing to teach the 11 disciples that remained with him, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, my Father prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the holy word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you bear fruit unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my holy word abides in you, ask for whatever you wish, and if it is my will, it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become and remain my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hallelujah. Christ is crucified and risen. Christ is crucified and risen indeed. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we are so ecstatic to be with you and honor the Sabbath here in your Son, Jesus' new sanctuary. A long process, but a process that has been joyfully done. Had bumps in the road. We give you all the credit because without God, we can accomplish nothing, as the slogan that's up on the screen has been telling us. But with God, if it is God's will, we can do anything. I've always preached that, and I fully believe it, and I know everyone here does. At times, we may have our doubts, but we move full steam ahead, knowing the Father God is cultivating us. I want to give thanks for the wonderful building, which became the property team, that has spent hours and hours making this site happen. And I want to give thanks for the great good news of the people, those who have gone to the eternal kingdom who supported us, those who are new, those who have been along for the full ride, and their financial support, their prayer support, and their dedication to making this a place of the branch and vine of Christ that we are grafted into. We're grateful to worship here, and we're grateful to serve. And we give all the honor and glory always to you, Father God, on behalf of your Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit, never taking credit for any of this, but just giving thanks that you grant it to us for why we're here in this journey on earth. And may we continue to build it up for those who are going to come after us and make Christ Lutheran Church, long after we're gone, a much even better place. And we'll be in the heavenly kingdom shouting amen and hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Amen. amen. Uh, one thing I want to note about communion, you can still come forward if you would rather have a blessing than commune. If you're not comfortable, some people aren't, and I would be glad to bless you. I don't want you to think you can't come forward. Know this about Holy Communion. You are communed by intention. There's a theology there. You don't have to take the bread and the wine or the bread and the juice. You are communed due to your faith. We don't limit what God can do in the bread and wine, right? We also will come to you. I know Diane has a little trouble walking sometimes, not picking on you, but we'd be glad to come to you and serve you. This is not going to be the permanent altar. This one mirrors the one that was in the multi-purpose room. We are waiting to see what Kevin is doing constructing it. Uh, also, the offering plate stands will match, and we don't know where he has in that construction. Well, we could have waited until it was all done. Excuse my French. Hell no. <laughs> we had to get the sound system in place the first. So glad to have you all here today. Well, here we are. We're in the season of Easter and we're still in St. John's Gospel and we're still studying pre death and resurrection texts. And we will have another one from chapter 15, the continuation of this 
chapter next Sunday, and then we'll move into chapter 17. As I have been preaching, that's the way it happens every year in the season of Easter. The first three Sundays are dedicated to resurrection texts, and then we get into St. John's Gospel, and we always study chapter 10 of Jesus being the great good shepherd, which we had last week. We have today's vine text. You can look up what is coming next week in chapter 17. One of the things that you have to do is get into the context and delve into it and get excited about it. This is the longest version of all the Gospels of the night in which he is betrayed. This is the Passover week. But it didn't just begin here in 15. It began in chapter 12. St. John doesn't give much account of it like he does everything else. But Jesus rode into Jerusalem in triumph. We're long beyond the triumph stage now. In fact, in chapter 13, when Jesus washed his disciples' feet celebrating the Passover... He's already said to Judas, go do what you must do. And Judas has left. That's why there's only 11 disciples right now. After he leaves, Jesus teaches them. You call me master and you call me Lord and you are correct. And you have seen that I've washed your feet. Therefore, I'm teaching you and giving you a message to do the same. That's part of being, part of being grafted into the vine of Christ. To go out and serve his people and not to be self-serving inward. This group, I'm so glad to be a part of you, has always been an outward congregation reaching out from this place. This place we spend the least amount of time in. What we do out there when it says you're entering God's mission and ministry fields is where the gospel truly is pruned and comes to life. And this is exciting. But Jesus was in agony on this night in 13. He says, I'm not going to be with you very much longer and how it makes me grieve. This is why this gospel writer, I believe, was there. This is just an extended story with a magnificent detail. Everything Jesus knew is coming. And he's still teaching. He's still giving. He's still sending people out into the world, including us. And they're still wondering at this point, what did he mean by telling Judas to go do what he must do? Right into chapter 14, they're still gathering. Jesus is still teaching. On the night of his arrest, he said, I'm leaving you. He's already telling them. But I'm going to my father's house or my father's mansion, depending on the translation. And it's glorious good news. And you will be without me, but do not be dismayed. When it is your time, I am coming to get you because I prepared that place for you. And I am the one. No one will be alone in death. And he's facing his own death and all the treachery that went with it. They'll all desert him. And he said, but you won't be alone, but you'll leave me alone. No wonder his heart is troubled. At that point, Thomas, God bless him, speaks up in chapter 14. Lord, we don't know where you're going. They're still trying to figure out where Judas went. And Jesus says to him point blank. No one comes to the Father except through me. I am the way and the truth and the life. And you all know that wonderful, beautiful, contextual text. Remember always where he said it on the night he was going to be betrayed. He's still telling all his betrayers, I am the way and the truth and the life. And then Philip speaks up. Show us the Father and we'll believe. Oh, and the agony just deepens. Philip, if you're struggling to figure out who I am, then look at all the miracles you've seen. How can you say that to me, Philip? Can you imagine the agony of Jesus at this stage of his life? Never let that slip from the joy of his resurrection. He is in divine pain before he is nailed to this cross. And then he gives us chapter 15. It is so beautiful. I am the vine. And you are the branches. Without me, you can do nothing. And who is pruning? My father loves you that much. He's going to cut off the dead wood if you let him. And he's going to give you the power of the Holy Spirit so you can do things you never dreamed of doing. Uh, this building, amen and hallelujah. By the way, guys, the track lights aren't on if you want them on. That's what I get for looking up. There you go. 
thought you might want to light up the altar. It's more important than me. Don't ever get caught up in this text about the, what Jesus says is the branches that are being chopped off. That's none of our business. Jesus is judge. We all deserve to be chopped off due to our sin. That's why we confess it. And we are absolved, not by me, but by the power of the Holy Spirit and the holy name of Jesus Christ, so that the Father can see us in that righteousness of Christ. Jesus is saying, hey, focus on the one who cultivates. And focus on me and the Holy Spirit, which he's already told them in chapter 14, is already granted to those 11 disciples. The Holy Spirit is with us as disciples, carrying on the tradition. And be bold about it. As I've been preaching with the word from Batman, the TV show, POW! It's peace, power, opening our minds to this scripture and the depth and breadth of what it means and getting us out into witness. We don't just worship. We worship and we serve and it's exciting. This place is based on that. And people know it because the Father is still trimming our branches. And he's saying, son, I see what they're doing in Christ Lutheran Church. I saw when they found that five acres or seven, I can never remember, acres of land. Five, thank you. It's good to have the choir back. And it was just trees, but they believed. And people know. Several years ago, there was some trimming from the vine where we used to be. And the Girl Scouts joined us. So there's a place to cultivate young women that I always preach. They know their value. They know they can do anything. And they know it's safe for them to be who they are right here in Jesus' house. And guess who's starting on Wednesday, I believe? Alcoholics Anonymous. Who have been trimmed from another vine and have had no place to meet for years. But they knew we would listen. And they're coming. And I love their name. I hope they keep it. The Lake We're Crazy Group. <laughs> that will be three AA meetings here. Because we know that conquering addiction is not possible with human power. But POW. It is conquerable with people gathered together to support each other in the power of Christ who can accomplish anything, case in point. But I want to challenge you in faith. Faith. In January of 2016, when my phone rang, and it was my cell phone, there was very little reception at our former church. There's very little reception here. I think we've got that income. We need the Lord to prune that for us a little more. I stepped outside and it was the attorney and said, actually the call came in December. Got the date. You need to be out of the church by X date in January. One thing I said to him, I said, wow, that is awesome. The judge let us stay through Christmas. And the attorney was stunned. But he was more stunned by this. I said, the only way that I'm not going to be at St. John Lutheran Church is if Jesus doesn't want me there anymore. I accepted being pruned. He almost fell off his chair, he told me. I had no idea who was going to come and form this church, if anybody. But I believed in faith that I would land on my feet because I knew what was right, and I was fighting for it in my estimation. That was 64 months ago. Did you know that? 5.3 years and now I'm standing here, not because of my doing, because Jesus Christ has continued to cultivate the branch which is all of us. It is never about me. It is about Jesus Christ to the glory of his Father through the power of the Holy Spirit. That's today's gospel. And I hope you're jumping for joy. You're allowed to make noise again. So ask yourself, well, that's 5.3 years, 64 months ago. What happened 48 months ago? 46, excuse me. 3.8 years. We were on this property on Thanksgiving, worshiping in the multi-purpose room. 
which the Lord, through the Father, pruned into a pandemic. And we grew. 56 people with a parking lot ministry. We were never online because the Father keeps pruning us. We must be doing something right in worship and service, or we would wither on the vine. 3.8 years from January of 2016. If you're not amazed by that, then you don't know who God is. We could not have done that on our own. And we had a vote over there in a multi-purpose room. It was 18 months ago. God bless Currington contractors, those faith-based people. You notice I get excited, I pace more. I have carpet now. 18 months ago. 1.8. Here. 1.5, excuse me. A year and a half. I hope that stuns you. But I hope you go home and when you leave here, shout hallelujah. Because we did it in faith and we believed. And look at this beautiful beautiful sanctuary and listen to the acoustics look at the with God we did it we have more technology now than I ever had in my life I'm still figuring out my truck <laughs> it's a 2021 I had an 08 it didn't have any of that but Jesus through his father is saying I want to continue to prune you the work isn't done the service continues I read a stunning article. I get the newsletter because I give to Salvation Army in Ocala. Salvation Army, if you give to them in Ocala, it stays in Ocala. Their article starts, Did you know that one in six people in the United States of America lives in poverty? One in six. And I'm here to tell you, it's greater than that in the state of Florida. Absolutely. Listen to what they write. Next time you're in line at the grocery store, look around you. Any one of those people could be one in six. Maybe it's a young mother bouncing a toddler on her hip who chooses the groceries in her cart over the hygiene products she can't afford. Or maybe it's the man who wears ragged and dirty shoes because he doesn't have access to transportation and has to walk between work and home. They're part of the vine. And Jesus is saying, I blessed you with this, and this wasn't cheap. Now go and serve my people. Make this the foundation to continue to get out there and take care of so maybe in our lifetime, this will go to one in five. I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit. Anything can happen. Wouldn't it be great if the number in the United States of America was zero? Wouldn't it be great if the number in the United States of America... Believe! But God isn't just going to intervene. God's looking at us and saying, I've gifted you beyond your wildest imaginations. And as Hires Baxley told me one time, Hey, Pastor Dave, never had a bricks truck in a funeral procession. Think about it. This is why Salvation Army is one of God's outposts that the Father continues to prune. They have served 106,500 nutritional meals to hungry men, women, and children. And they distributed 5,000 bags of fresh groceries to those in need. They provided 33,022 nights of safe lodging to individuals and families in our community experiencing homelessness. 33,000 people, are, a minimum, are homeless in Marion County. Provided toys for over 1,000 local children through our Angel Tree program. I wonder if they stole that from us. What do you think, Elizabeth? And I love this. We visit seniors, shut-ins, and hospital patients to share fellowship and offering a listening ear. I've never done that for any of you, have I? I'm starting back at it Monday, now that I'm vaccinated, so I'm not putting you at risk or the people I visit. But it's here local, too. God bless you for everything you do for St. Teresa's Roman Catholic Church. Don't stop. Just because we did a food drive program doesn't mean we quit. 
We're going to start doing some more things to raise awareness, but the bins have not been that full lately. When you're in that grocery line, you want to help. This is why. I'm not going to read you Mary Ann's whole letter, just this piece. We had an increase of 3,106 guests per month in comparison to last fiscal year. Per month, from July 1st, 2020 through March 31st, 2021, we served 78,788 guests. For the total fiscal year, July 1, 2019, through June 30th, 2020, our total 12 months clients served was 67,781. Listen, we have already exceeded the yearly number by 11,007 guests, and we still have three months to go. Pick something up. Bring it to the church. Better yet, go up there and say, I'll cook, I'll clean. Have you actually met some of those people? Because I have. You want to put a face with poverty? Go up there and interact with them. You may not be able to get up to Salvation Army, but you can get to St. Teresa's. Just go greet them when they're walking up. Tell them that God loves them. They're part of the vine. And you know what God says about the lowest and the least. They're going to be first. But you get to tell them that. You think people need to hear that when they're down and out? Heck yeah. Pastor Berger, Food for the Poor. You know, we built wells and homes. We continue to support them in the Caribbean, where there is so much destitute poverty, right in our backyard from Florida. He wanted to be here today. He's always excited. But he said, if I write something, will you read it? And I said, absolutely. Here's what he wrote for us today. Dear people of Christ, I cannot tell you how excited I am personally on behalf of all of us at Food for the Poor to congratulate you on the dedication of your new worship and ministry center. I've had the privilege to know you and Pastor Dave, and we are kindred spirits in the faith. I have been at the St. John site, helped move chairs, and covered the bingo signs at the community center. We lovingly call Orange Blossom Hills Community Center. By the way, the property team was thinking about putting bingo board signs up here for you. Listen to this. I've been with you in the parking lot at the preliminary worship center. I can hardly wait to come back and see all of this for myself. I've witnessed you dropping in-kind gifts faithfully into the bins for any number of needs. At the same time, you welcome me to speak for some of God's most vulnerable people. Thank you. Generously committed to build several homes in Haiti. Of course, we've been in other countries and built wells and medical centers with a coalition of churches. Listen to this. Your purpose, tenacity, and faith always inspires me. The Jesus Beggar sculpture, some of you remember, we keep it on the altar during Lent. I was privileged to present you is the way I personally see the core of your heart and your faith. You are exceedingly special people who were grafted apart from St. John in 2016 and never gave up. You stand together in difficult times, and he has walked with us, as well as in great moments of triumph. Here today, in wonderful new surroundings, you stand, as always, in one of my favorite statements, Jesus strong. Peace, Pastor Bob Berger, food for the poor. To him I say amen and hallelujah. Amen. And you've been generously giving to them. If you look in your bulletin, every Sunday people are giving. And 100% of that goes to program. I was thinking about how to close today. You know, one of my favorite hymns, we sang it when we moved into the dedication, All Are Welcome. Well, I was thinking about that, and I went, no, the Holy Spirit, you know, how, you know, if the Holy Spirit can send me to Batman, the Holy Spirit can send me to anything, right? <laughs> and I'm all ears. The Holy Spirit said, use your favorite word. So that every remember, everyone remembers who actually did this, because it ain't you. My favorite word is amen. And amen means truly, truly, it is so. You see that that's up on your screens? Who's first? With God. We're going to sing the amen song because the Sabbath and sing it to God.
because that's one of the ways we always celebrate. And you haven't been able to do that for a year because we weren't singing. You can follow me if you want. I'm just going to keep wandering around up here. <laughs> but on three, the amen song. One, two, three. This is to God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. One more. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Why did we sing it three times? Once for the Father once for the Son, and once for the Holy Spirit. Because <clears throat> the Lord is the vine. And by grace, His Father still continues to prune us, to make us better. Why do we know that? Because the Holy Spirit has gifted us with faith in our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Thanks be to God. Amen. George is going to get our next hymn up there. It is 400. God of Tempest, you got it up on the board there. God of Worldwood, hymn 400. today's communion liturgy on the bottom of page three going into page four and I want to give you credit for something that I believe we stood for and 
and I don't mean this vindictively or negatively, I mean it completely positively. I love hymns because the Holy Spirit was speaking to me saying, where deceit conceals injustice, kindle us to speak your truth. In my humble opinion, that is why we are here today. I thought maybe some of you might say amen. I didn't think I was the only one that felt that way. Don't forget, when you come forward for communion, there are hand sanitizers, as they always will be in the center aisles. And I'd ask you if you would like to, please do. We ask everyone at least to do that. And you can pick up your cup here. Don't never say, oops, I'm sorry up here. Well, there's plenty of time. So if you forget a cup, um, we'll tease you and have you go back and get it. <laughs> I, I, otherwise, otherwise, you're going to try and make this a common cup, and that's not happening. <laughs> Remember, your server will have the pita bread. Okay, It'll tear you off a piece. I'll come second with this cup. And uh, then your server will come and pick up your cups in this return tray. And if you need gluten-free, that's when you would say, ask the first server. Remember, it's here. And again, if you do not partake in wine, we do have this. Just let me know, and I'll pour that for you. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love, you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering, preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to wall. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. It is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup. After giving thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death, resurrection, and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out the Holy Spirit, that by this holy communion we may know the unity we share with all your people in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The choir is going to be moving to the back. They are going to join us. We are going, for the first time in one full year, we are singing the Lord's Prayer.
start coming forward. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. Thanks be to God. Remember, you'll come forward down the center aisle, pick up a cup, find a spot. There's plenty of room up here to move around. We will be communing you in a clockwise direction. I will commune our communion assistants here this morning first, being Carolyn and Dick. They'll commune me, and then we'll commune all of you. Keep it up, we'll have to spray for ants. You on page four, the final table blessing and sending uh, our hymn, our sending hymn is 677, 677. That is this little light of mine. George, you can put that up on the board now. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ continue to strengthen us and keep us in his grace and the power of the healing Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. One of the things that I just realized in the bulletin that's missing, of course, there is a missing final sending piece. The blessing should still be there. And it has been omitted, um, and we're going to do it anyway. Don't worry about it. Some of you will know it. Some of you won't, okay? But if you know it, pray it with me. We'll get it in your bulletin next week. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Lord is worthy to be praised and adored. So we lift up holy hands in one accord, singing, Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. George has our sending, processing out into the Lord's world. Him, as a father, continues to prune us as part of the living vine of Christ to serve him.
All right, the final sending is there, but you have a piece of it that got dropped off uh, like the blessing did, but that, we'll get that fixed. Your piece, you remember it, it's going to say, we will, with thanks to God, amen. We're going to end with that amen. So continue to bring Christ to all people today and every day, gloriously and lovingly grafted into his vine, pruned by his Father. Go in peace, power, with the scriptures open to our minds and in witness, and share Jesus' gospel, great good news. We will, with thanks to God, amen. There's coffee and donuts. Don't forget to get your messenger. This is your time to meet people you haven't seen in a while.